Welcome back to Function and Programming. This would be my last lecture on this course. Today I would like to discuss modern new programming paradigms, what we call it as actors, actor systems. Before we discuss on actors, Let's discuss a little bit of processors and threads. When you do programs in early operating systems, they run what they call it as processors. In any operating system, basically executes multiple processes. So our task is organized into the process and process executes by the OS. So when you when this process wants to talk to each other, it uses interprocess communications. So interprocess communication, so IPC may execute via sockets, pipes, or signals. So these are the facilities supported by OS. So when this process consumes a lot of resources, later on so we have introduced a concept called threads. In this, multiple parallel threads may run within the same process. So process can, in other words, process can further divide into what we call it as parallel execution, what we call it as threads. Threads are mapped into a different process automatically by CPU or virtual machines or whatever. So in generally, the application programmer do not need to care about those processes or threads. Operating system will care about it. So, so by introducing those process threads, what we try to do is to achieve what we call it as concurrent and parallel programming. So I think you should understand what I meant by concurrent and parallel. In the concurrent means, so we execute or we do some actions. And in order to do, complete this, those actions, we need to access shared resources. For example, let's say there are two queues which want to take a call from same vendor machine. So then those two queues need to share a same machine. Similarly, there might be a file should access by two programs or two processes. So then we have to have some mechanism to share this resource between those two processes. So when you share it, it should be fair. Everybody should get the same decent time to access it and so on. Similarly, not only the files, so process may share the memory, networks, and so on. So that usually we execute concurrent applications on our operating systems. So in the other concept is parallel, parallel execution. In the parallel execution, we have resources dedicated to those process or the applications or threads. So when you do parallel computing, so we, we assume there are no shared resources. As I explained, concurrency require to share resources. So what are these resources? CPU, memory, and so on. 
so if someone accessing these resources in concurrent application other has to wait so we can somehow speed up the execution by having concurrent applications but the problem with concurrency as i repeat sharing the resources so if you want to read and write to a file so if someone is writing so others has to wait so in between if some two threads want to communicate each other so similar things need to be done in order to handle concurrency as well as parallel concepts in an efficient way there is a, a other there is a interesting model of program which we call it as actors actors encapsulate states and behavior of a program so those actors are independently independent processes somewhat so those processes might design into a threads so we'll discuss later on and in between those actors we can communicate via message so you know when you do programming we are use different abstraction models so the most popular abstraction models are object oriented programming in object oriented programming everything is object you know we encapsulate attributes and the methods into objects similarly sector based models we encapsulate states of the and the behavior of actors so in this act models everything is act similar to the object oriented model so those actors are independent from each other if they want to talk to each other they have to pass messages why we need actors we need to act we need actors to achieve concurrency as well as parallel behavior of our applications actually even though we are start discussing these actors in modern era so this concept starts long time back in somewhere 1973 by carl sagan so later on so there was some theoretical development by henry and alba so idea is how do we have a synchronized message passing models so each people independently do their activities and in case they want to ex exchange information they pass message in, 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 in between them so those actors execute independently and they share messages so in the actor models everything is actor each actor has a life cycle so we start we first pre initiate actor and then we can start this actor and finally we can terminate that actor if we don't need any more we can think about actors are kind of email or email boxes so actors created similar to creating an email account after we create that email account that account can receive emails 
Similarly, after we create actor, actor can receive messages. So we have to start actor after creating that, like we have to start using our email box. So then that box can email can email box email address can receive and send mails. Similarly, after creating the actor, we can start the actor. So those actors can reach, receive, and send messages in between other actors. So if, after receiving a message, actor can process it and then produce output. Or actor can totally ignore the message. If those actors no longer needed, so we can terminate those actors. Usually upon receiving a message by actor, so actor do some processing. So maybe they uh, analyze this message, maybe run some functions by using those data and so on. So after execution, they might send back a message to the sender like reply to this message or else pass that message to someone some other act so usually each actor do a small task so they so they distribute that task among the actors sometimes so we can design actor to kind of ignore the messages as well. So it's based on the our activity. We should decide how many actors needed, which kind of actors are they? And what are we going to do with this data received from that? And then after that we should decide whether we reply to it or not, or whether to forward it to some other actor or not. So collection of actors usually refers as actor systems. So actor systems consist of so many different kinds of actors. All the actors run asynchronously and operating system will assign those actors to the threads and those actors will execute by those threads. So each actors usually do a small message, a small process, and as a result, they might send some other message to some other actor, or they might send a reply to the sender. By designing application based on actor models, so we could easily achieve concurrent parallel execution as well as so those actors are heavily reusable and easily tested as well as can easily maintain the other thing in the actor systems are they are location transparent that means those actors can run on the same jvm or same os or they can run in different VMs or different OSs. Or they can run entirely different physical machines. When you configuring actor system, we can tell where should those actors run. We are not going into details of the complex actor systems. Instead, we will consider in this lecture uh, uh, actor system which runs on the same JBM. So those actors are usually hierarchical system. In the Scala actors handled by this package, open source package called Akka. So those actors basically receive messages. 
for that it acted as a mailbox with infinite message queue. So the message receives to those actors queued in this ma mailbox and then actor will fetch one by one in order and process it. As I mentioned in Scala, actor model implemented by a package called ACA. ACA is written in Scala and it is an open source library available to Java as well as Scala. So you can use ACA libraries to develop Java concurrent programs as well as Scala concurrent programs. ACA makes it very easy to write correct concurrent parallel applications. So name Akka comes from some famous Swedish mountain. So a group of Swedish researchers have started working. So let's try to learn active model by using Akka frame. So when you define actor using Akka, so each actor can pass messages using two methods. The simplest and recommended way of passing messages are 10. So you can use the word 10 for explanation marks to tell something to the other actor. So I can pass a message to actor X. So I can tell something to actor X in other words. Similarly, I can ask something from that. If you tell something, so other actor receives what you tell. And they might process it or ignore it. So there are no response to that. So after a test, that immediately returns. So when you use ask, so that wait, Till it get a response. So in other words, when you ask something from that using question marks operator, it wait or it returns the object we call it as a future. Future consists of a reply to what you say. But usually when you develop the program in actor models. We usually use tell because it returns immediately and there are no pauses in between executions. When you create actor systems using Akka, we have to use a class or configuration object called props. Props tells the actor how to create using which class, how to route the messages, where to deploy it, and so on. So props is mandatory when creating an actor. So we have to pass out the props to actor creation methods. Right. Before we start looking at these activist applications, so I would like to introduce some tool or a simple build tool or SPT. Some people call it as Scala build tool as well. SPT is a tool where we can use to develop applications compile and package applications, especially Scala and Java applications. When you want to use 
SPG to build a style application, first of all, you have to create a directory and include a file called SPG configuration file, SPG file into that directory. So that file tells the SPG tool what are the classes you're going to compile and its version of it and what kind of Scala versions we use it and their dependencies. If you want to create a SPT file to build the Akabase actor model, so we need to depend on the Akka libraries as well. So sample SPT file is given. So here, for example, we're going to develop an actor model called Hello Akka. So I give a name of this package and its version number. And I tell here the Scala version I'm going to use. And then I tell the system, Akka version I'm going to use in the compilation. So then I define those versions as dependencies in the SPT file. So you put that SPT file into the creative directory, and then you create a class, also put it into that directory. And after that, you can run a command for SPT run that will automatically import the packages required and compile our SCA files and execute it. I will show that in a separate video. So now let's discuss or see how simple actor model looks like. So in order to create an actor, you have to extend the existing class in Scala package called actor. So for example, here I'm creating an actor called hello actor. So there I create a class. My class name is hello actor. That extend the actor. So each actor has a method called receive and few other methods like pre-start and so on. So we can overwrite these messages or methods and process our own actions, for example. So we can overwrite the existing method of actor and tells the class what to do when they receive messages. So it's like an action list. So we have an actor called Hello Akma, which extends the actor class. And we overwrite a receive method of this actor class or receive function of this actor class. Inside of this receive function, using case statements, we need to tell what to do based on the type of the message we receive. For example, you see, I start to receive, and we, I have a set of pattern matching case statements. So in the first case statement, I tell case hello, transform to this function. So what it tells, if in case, so this actor receive a message called hello, then print this. Similarly, if that actor receive a message called custom, transform to this, that means print hello custom. So underscore represent anything. So if that actor receive anything else, print it. So actor model process or receive method of that process the messages in model. So they, when it receives message to its mailbox, it check whether that is hello, then it do this, and check whether it is custom, then it do this. If anything else, it do this. So that uh, very how simple actor look like. After 
that in our main program, we can use this act. How can you do that? So here I create a main object extending the act. Or class and create a value called system. So, first of all, if you want to create actor systems, you have to tell it create a value using a function called actor systems. So, in the actor system function, you need to give, give a name for that system. So, it returns an actor system. So, under this actor systems, we can insert different actors. So using a method called actor. So we, in the system object, we call the actor of functions and we test, we pass configuration object of the actor. Configuration object of the actor, call it as props. So I pass props, Hello Akka. Hello Akka means the class of that name of that. So I pass name of that Hello Akka to that rock methods. And then I name it. So the name must be unique to this particular actor systems. After that, I can tell anything to the actor. So for example, I say, I create an actor called actor one and tell hello. And similarly, I tell cousin to the same actor using actor tell method. Tell method is an explanation mask. So you see at the last two statements, after creating of the actor, I tell them hello and cousin. So actor is call it as actor reference. I repeat what happens here in the main method. It's first create a system called actor system. Name of that is hello system. You can use any name for that. After that, I have creating an actor using the actor class hello. Actor. So that is the class name of the actor which we have created. And we can give a unique name for that. So this type of actors, we can create multiple actors of this type, if you prefer. So after we call the system.actorof methods, it returns a reference to the actor creator. Using that reference, we can tell something to this actor or ask something from that. So you see here it returns actor object. And then we tell actor one hello. And we tell actor one cousin. This hello and the cousin messages is passed to the actor object. That means those two messages will reach to this hello actor. And it will process by the receive method. So it receives the hello, it prints it. It receives cousin and print that. So that's how with this simple actor system works. So when you work with actors, so we have to pass messages in between. So when you create those messages, we can create complex messages, which has different fields. So for that, we could use case classes. So for example, let's say we have uh, actor systems where we pass two numbers and add, multiply, and do other operations based on the operator attached to this message. So if you want to do so, I create a case class called message, which has operator, which is a string, and two other integers, x and y. So then this message reached to actor. So actor will process x and y based on the operator. So that's what, we, what I want to do. So for that, 
I created a message system class which extend that. So that means I create a message processing actor. So this actor receive a message. I check the pattern of the message. I check using the case state. So I check whether first case of me is actually check this message plus and whatever is you assigned to attend one. Then what I say, I return x plus one to the sender. Similarly, there is other case. If that receives multiplication with x and y, I test them back x multiplication y to the sender of this message. If unknown cases underscore, we say it's unknown message. So that's my sample message system active. So I demonstrate here the ask method where I ask this actor to process the messages. For that, here I create an actor system for message system using a method actor systems. And using method actor raw, I create two actors of same type. My actors are message system actors. The first actor, I name it as message system one, and the second name it as message system two. So my actor system has two same kind of actors. So now I want to ask two different things from this actor one and actor two. So how do I do? So now I say actor ask. Ask user question mark operator. Tell use the explanation operator. So what I ask from actor one is to add these two mass numbers. I say plus four five. After I ask it, so I have to wait till I get the result. So the, for that I use a method called wait and say wait result till this time. Because we cannot wait indefinite, there should be a timeout. So my timeout time is five seconds. So my wait method wait five seconds maximum to receive answer. So if that not received within that given time, it returns an exception. Otherwise, it returns the result. And here I simply print the result. Similarly, I can ask actor two to multiply the same numbers. So then while actor one is adding the numbers, two number, actor two will multiply them parallel. So that's how actor system works. Okay, now let's see how to do some meaningful application. So let's say we want to create an actor system to compute hash values of given messages. So what are, what necessary is someone typing a messages. So as soon as they type message, so we want to calculate hash value of this given message using several algorithms. For example, assume using two different hashing algorithms. So how many actors we need for that? And how do you pass messages in between? So what I want to do is reading a message from the keyboard, calculating the hash value of this message, MD5 algorithm plus SHA1 and then printing those hash values on the terminal. So in order to prove that, I create four actors in my actor system. So first of all, reading actor, and then two actors, one to calculate MD5 hash values, other to calculate SHA1 hash values. And soon as it's calculated, so I want to print those hash values. 
So in my design, I have a reading actor which will run concurrent to the other actors. So reading actor read the message. So they immediately pass that two messages to two actors, one to calculate MD5 hash, other to calculate SHA1 hash. So those two actors parallelly calculate the hashing values. Soon as they complete these hash calculations, they pass it to a printing actor. So printing actors will print it on the screen. So in other words, the reading actor will take inputs, give parallel actors to process that, and the result will be printed by a single actor. So that's my design. So you can design it in a different way if you like. How do I create such a system? So for example, I create an actor system extending the application. So there I create actor system and give a name hash system. And this value represents an actor system, rather as two actor system. So in this actor system, Using actor of method, I create an actor called hash system. And then I create two actors called MD5 and SSJ. So those both actors have certain configuration as you see, same props. And it takes a class hash to the configuration. So then I create other actor using a props print hash. So printing. So this actor to read hash values. So these two actors to calculate hash values, and this actor to print that value. So my actor system, you see, system actor four cores to create four actors. It shows in the previous figure. So now let's have a look on independent. Actors. So first, this is uh, my actor of hash system. You see, hash system extends actors. So here in this actor, I override pre-start method. So this actor may not receive anything. So because of that, I override receive methods to empty behavior. Actor dot empty behavior. That means it don't have any receive method. Message. It don't receive any. Instead, it tells something to the other actors to execute. So when that actor starts, it's automatically execute its method called pre-start. So I overwrite the existing pre-start method of this actor and write what I want to do at this time. So what I want to do, first of all, I have to take a reference to the two other actors which process MD5 hash and SSJ1 hash. So actors are already created using actor, actor of methods. So within this hash system actor, what I do, I select the actor which I create. So for that, I need to give a path for the actors. Actors are hierarchical system, so all the actors created by a programmer is under user domain. So I, under user domain, I have created four actors. So what I want to select is MD5 hash actor and SHA1 hash actor. So I get two reference values to those actors. So those reference values are MD5 and SHA1. So then after that, you see there is a while loop, infinite while loop. In that while loop, I read a line. This is standard input read line method. So it returns me a string. So then I pass a message using hash name and the string to the MD5 act. Similarly, I pass the message object using the hashing name the string to the SHJ1 net. So now look how let's look at 
how these hashing actors look like. So here I create a hashing actor. You see, class hash extend actor. So they are in the first I you see actor selection method, I retain reference to the printing hash actor. And then I implement the receive method of hash. So in the receive, I say, in case I receive a message with algorithm name and the message, I transform to the hash values. So in order to calculate hash values, I use a static class available in Java called message digest get instance algo with a name. So it returns the object of the given algorithm. From that algorithm, I call the digest method. It returns the hash value of this given data in the byte array form. So this method will return the data hash values to the value called hash. So I convert that hash into a string and test to the printing actor for printing. P refers the re reference to the printing actor. So I use tell method and pass message my algorithm name and string of these hash values. So you see I use in order to build a string out of this byte array return by this digest method, I use map functions. So in this hash is a byte array. So there I can call the map method. So in the map, I pass a syn syntax, formatting syntax. So there I say I want to format it in hexadecimal form. Every byte in this byte array, underscore represent every byte, need to format in this form. That format it in the hexadecimal form. After that, I call the next string methods, which returns a string of the hexadecimal. So that string, Embedded into the message object and pass that to the printing actor. Now let's look like how printing actor works. So you see, I have, I created a class called print hash extending actor. It has a receive, receive method. It receives a message which has the algorithm name and the hash value. Simply using printf method, it prints the algorithm and the hash values together with the actor path. Center.path.to string returns me a string of the actor path. So when any message receives to this printing actor, it tells where it comes from with the algorithm name and the hash value. So that's how my hashing actor system works. Okay, at last, let's look at some other real life application which can be easily implemented using actor systems. This is also a front and parallel application. There are my example is to measure a temperature in a room or area. Assume I want to calculate the average temperature in the area where I have deployed several sensors. So I want to make, get those sensor values, read by those sensors, and average them, and then printing them on the terminal or saving them in the database. For simplicity, I assume I want to print it on the terminal. So for that purpose, I can create actor system. So there I design three actors, one to feed the sensor values, other to calculate average, other to save it or print it. Data reading act can multiply to the number of nodes where the sensors attach. 
So the sensor one, sensor two, sensor three are same type of actors where we execute on different hardware as a same. And then average actor will calculate the average of the data values which we see on those sensors. And these printing actors will then print them. So that's the actor system I want to create. So how do I create that? Yeah, I create those sensing actor system. So that I extend the main application and create a system called sensor systems. You can use any name here. So that returns the actor very system very. So then this system variable, I can start adding the actors as necessary. So for that, I need first add the actor called average actor, which props average configuration and name it as ABT. And then I add the actor called printing actor, name it as printing. After that, I will create a set of actors to read the temperatures from different senses. So I do it in a smart way. So for that, I create a list of senses. I create a list called sensor list, which has the names of those sensors for the sensor one, sensor two, and sensor three. So I can any number of sensors here. If there are five sensors, I can give five names for those sensors, five identities. So those identities need to be unique. So I create a list of those sensor IDs. Then each ID, I need to create an actor. So how do I do that? I create a list of actors which contains the reference to those actor sensors. So using map methods, I say sensor.map. And what I want is actor of same configuration and name is the element of s in this list so then each value assigned to x and pass to actor and return actor, actor reference and then take next identity pass to this and create the next element in the list so that's how map works so using sensor of map i can create list of actors. After that, I pass a random value, which less than 10,000, to each actor. Again, using map methods. So when I call actor.map and underscore, means every element in that. Actors has a list of actor reference. So each, we take first one and pass a random number. Next actor reference, pass a random number, like that. And ask each actor reference or each actors to measure the temperature in the random intervals. So that's the message I pass to each actors or sensing actors. So here, how my sensing actor look like? So it has the receive method you see. So this receive method receive a random number. I ask my thread to sleep in a random interval. The thread sleep method in X number of milliseconds. After that, it reads the sense and pass that value to the average method. So each sense actors works independently, parallelly to each other and read sensor value in random intervals as you see. My read sensor functions I define here. So simplicity, I'm not reading it from a physical sensor instead. I just return a random number which less than 100 to simulate it. A hardware sensor. If it is hardware sensor, you can write a method to read the value from that sensor. Read function will do that and that value will pass us to the average sensor using average actor using tell. I say average tell the value. So this value will tell to the 
active role average. So here my average active look like. So I extend that the method again. And it has the receive method you see. It receives a value that is the reading of a time. And it prints that on the terminal, this message, saying it re received this value from a particular sensor. And after that, it adds that value to the sum method and increases the counter. So this sum and counter value variables are defined in the same function. So after that, so I divide sum by the counter that is actually average. I tell that to a printing and send back a message to the sender to read the temperature in this round of random interval. So I scala until random next interval return random value. So which is less than 10,000. So that passes, that tells to the sender that is the actor who sends that temperature values. So then that sender will wait for this number of time and read the next temperature values and pass it to this average method. So each time when the average method reads the temperature from any of these sensors, they add it and take the cumulative average and passes that to the printing method to print it, printing actor to print it. So this is how my printing actor looks like. So it extend again actor method, actor, actor class, and then all right, the receive methods there when it re re receives the x value that is a double and it just prints that. So you see it prints. So when you execute this particular program, I will show you in a separate video. So it's randomly read some values by sensor actors and passes to the average actor and then it passes to the printing actor to print. So each actor will do a very small action parallel to each other. So then we could develop efficient parallel plus concurrent application using this way. So as you see, actor models create very nice, simple, straightforward methods to build concurrent and parallel applications. It concludes our course plus this lecture. So I create a separate video to demonstrate how those actors work. So you can practice those videos. So with the present microservice dockerizing decentralized distributed applications actors are very useful so actors are the way to build clean simple concurrent parallel applications so obviously using functional methods using functions Okay, thank you very much for following this course so far and hope you have learned the modern methodologies and the way to build application in nice, clean, fast, frameworks and techniques. Hope you enjoy this course. And if you have any questions, you can drop me an email 
of Mayfield University Gates of 